Hello and welcome back. Um, come take a look at a viewer recommended um, basic fantasy role playing game. One of my other videos, I think it was one of my Thaco videos, Thaco videos, he uh, recommended that I check out this basic fantasy role playing game just to see, uh, I don't know, I guess what I thought or if it would be a good replacement for the uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons and so forth. Um, I think go well, ahead and just grab because I got it for like the uh, five bucks or something so it's like you can buy it for the cost of printing it so i just went ahead and got it for the cost of printing it um so i do that sometimes like i have the ostrich manual and the white box um manual and things like that so sometimes i'll just grab these and kind of they're just kind of fun to read through a bit dungeon world up there and just just a variety of things like that so sometimes they're just kind of fun to grab and read through so i just went ahead just bought it five bucks whatever not a big deal uh overall it uh it does keep the spirit of uh many of the game mechanics of dungeons and dragons alive the the mechanics that you're used to in the in the you know the regular um player's handbook and and things like that and it uh it claims on that that's its goal anyway is to uh it's it's intended for those who are fans of the old school game mechanics it's simple enough for children. You're absolutely right about that. Simple enough for children. Uh, basic fantasy is simple enough for children and perhaps second or third grade to play. Yet has enough depth for adults as well. And actually, if you were looking to introduce uh, D and Dungeons and Dragons to kids, I would say this is pretty good for that. Um, because they're not wrong about it being simple enough. It. Uh, it might be missing some of the depth and complexity that you would want in a gaming system, but some of that depth and complexity is oftentimes skipped and ignored and looked over anyway. So I don't know how important a lot of that depth and complexity really is. That said, there's a couple of things about it that I'm not a super fan of. And they went ahead and went with the D20 system with the ascending armor classes uh base armor class looks like it's about an 11 uh plate mail is 17. um if you're coming from a 4e 5e 3e i'm sure this is what you want this makes perfect sense to you this is simple this is easy coming from a 2e background and i played 5e and i'm going back into 1e um, which is actually where i started playing was in 1e all those many years ago um there's just something that seems kind of uh, icky about the uh, D20 system with the always ascending armor class. And and the reason for that is because for me, getting to that negative number, getting to zero, getting to a negative number, that was an achievement. That was a goal. That was like a tangible, hey, you got a reward here. This is an awesome thing. You got, you got to a negative. But that's just like a personal thing for me. Um, most people that aren't me, are going to go, yes, that's what I wanted. I wanted a nice, simple to use thing like that with the ascending. I don't want to sit and try to remember how FACO works or how to subtract numbers. I just want to be able to look at a dice, look at a number, and think of uh, which one's bigger and then roll on, which is fine. I mean, that's basically how FACO works anyway. So... um Looking through it, though, it's got a uh, pretty good layout. It's got the two-column layout. Uh, kind of goes through. It gives you your races. gives you your classes. Magic user. There's a thief. Uh, cleric fighter. Pretty much everything is kind of laid out like here. Cleric and fighter on the, facing page, or on the same page. Magic user, thief are on the same page. Thief a little bit bigger because it has the thief abilities. But for the most part, that's your four classes. Your four races were the dwarf, elf, halfling, and human. So no gnomes. So that's another negative for me. No gnomes. I'm um, actually kind of fond of playing the gnome. So, but that's just me. You guys, as as you would expect, there's most of the sections you would expect to find. There's the weapons and equipment. Uh, this vehicle section kind of in here various spells and kind of there's a not a bad section on spells it's pretty pretty decent 
the adventuring section, they kind of tell you the kind of the basic stuff you'd expect to see, how an encounter works and all that good stuff. But what I was the thought I would do here is just kind of pseudo live because I'll edit out if it gets boring or dull or whatever. But I'm just gonna take a piece of paper. Because they um actually did you see that there, but they're there. Character sheet they give you right in the book, which is kind of fun. All of my character sheets were always on on line notebook paper. And the sample they give you right there is on line notebook paper. So that's fun. So I'm just going to go ahead and give my guy a uh, quick name here. And we're going to name him, um, oh, I don't know, Rotti. I just made that up, obviously. We're just going to go with the human fighter option because fighters in most systems are the simplest to figure out. And once you figure that out, then you can kind of go from there. So he's going to be a fighter. He'll be level one. Um, he'll obviously start with zero XP. Uh, his strength. Intelligence. Wisdom. Dexterity. Constitution. Charisma. Okay, so we got our six stats there, or six abilities there. Now it says here, we have to roll 3d6 for each ability score, as described by the character ability section, and write the results after the names of the abilities. Write down the scores in the order you will roll them. If you are unhappy, ask your game master for advice. So, I have, uh, have my dice here. And I guess I don't need all four of them, so we'll go ahead and put that one aside since that's the hardest one to see on camera. And we'll just roll these guys out. Okay, start out with we have a 15. Four, five, six is 15. So looks like strength of 15 for a fighter won't be too bad. I think. I don't know. Looks like we have about a 10 here for intelligence. And keep going here. We're going to have, these aren't so bad of rolls. Um, 12 for wisdom. And let's see, an 11 for dex. I do happen to make a math error here. I guess that's the way it is, but 7. There's always that joke about the school that you went to being, you know, the school you went to. That, so they they uh, graduated, yeah. So anyway, this was a uh, six and two is eight. So constitution isn't uh, exactly where I'd like to see on a fighter, probably. But the strength of fifteen is actually not bad for a fighter. I think we'll find out so we wrote these down it says to write down the ability score bonus or penalty for each score beside the score itself as shown on the table on the next page so okay next page these kind of what you'd expect you look at uh here and it kind of gives you a plus minus type system going on um so a strength of 15 that means this is a plus one. Intelligence of 10. That must be average because that's a zero. Wisdom of 12. That's also part of average. So zero. Dex of 11 is considered average. Zero. Constitution of seven. It's actually going to give me a negative one. And a charisma of eight is going to give me a negative one. So this guy isn't real stellar. He's kind of... Uh, he isn't going to be considered uh, one of the top uh, top of his trade, I don't think. But, you know, sometimes that's the fun part of playing these systems, including, you know, Dungeons & Dragons itself, is you could end up with some suboptimal characters. You, they don't all have to be uh, superheroes. Um, it's, high, it's more in how you play them. And it does come down to dice rolling, of course, especially in combat. But a lot of times it's just how you play them, so... 
he would definitely be relying on his strength versus, say, his uh, charisma. But he's going to know that he's got a kind of a glass jaw going on. So he'll probably tend to avoid situations that he can avoid. All right. So now we need to choose a race and class for our character. Your character must meet the prime requisite minimum for class as described in the character classes section. In order to be a member of that class, also note that there are minimum and maximum military requirements for the various races and described in the character races section. So we'll flip to, I guess it was after this. Um, and I just said we're going to go. But let's just say, for example, we wanted to do dwarf. Um, and in the dwarf section, it says they need a constitution of nine. So I would not be able to be a dwarf. Uh, let's see, for like an elf, it says that uh, all elves have dark vision. Oh, restrictions, I'm in the wrong spot. Love to combine. Try to have an intelligence of nine, so I actually could be an elf. I could be an elven fighter. Um, they can may not have a constitution higher than 17, so not a problem there. So technically, I could be an elven fighter. I'll just take a look here at the halfling restriction. This should have, would have been nicer in a little quick table format, by the way. This is kind of an ugly way to do this. This could have been done in a table. I would have taken an extra couple of pages, but since most people are probably using the PDF, a table would have definitely made more sense here. But uh, minimum dexterity of nine. Um, our dexterity is 11, so we could actually be a halfling if we wanted to be. And strength not higher than 17, so we'd be fine with strength. But we're going to go ahead with uh, humans. Humans may be any class and have no minimum or maximum ability scores. So we could have been everything but any, anything but a dwarf, I think we decided there. But we're going to stick with human for now. Just because, that's like I said, it's usually the simplest one to figure out. So, we said we're going to be a human. And humans... Broad variety, shapes, sizes, so forth. Um, humans in any class, like we said. They get a bonus of 10% on all experience points. And they are the standard, so there are no um, bonuses to the saving throw because they are what the saving throws are set up from. Alrighty. Okay, our next step then is choose that class. Like I said, we're going to choose fighter, but let's just take a look at cleric real quick. See how hard this is to figure out. Okay, lots of information. Clerics fight as thieves. Harder than thieves. Hardier than thieves. Prime requisite is wisdom. Has to have at least a nine in wisdom. We could be a human cleric. Okay, fighters, of course, must have a strength of nine. Well, we have that. All right. Oh, and also, of course, fighters can wear any armor and use any weapon. If I wanted to be a magic user, let's see here. Intelligence, score of nine. Uh, I could just barely be a magic user. And if I wanted to be a thief, I would need a dexterity of nine, which I would also... So I could technically, I think, be any of the um, classes, but I'm just going to go ahead and stick with fighter for now. Let's just go back to where I talked about Fighter real quick. And it says it can include soldiers, barbarians, so forth. Best at fighting, hardiest. Okay, I get a 1d8 hit dice. And that's kind of what it tells us about them. I don't get a whole lot of other information. It doesn't have us write our hit dice anywhere. It has, our, it has us write our hit points, but not our hit dice. But I'm just going to go ahead and write down hit dice 1d8. Even though I, you know, obviously I could go look it up on the chart again. We also need a section here for hit points. Now, since we have our hit dice, one would assume that that uh, gives us that too. But I'm not real sure. And that's kind of one of my problems here is I'm not real sure about that. But we'll get to it. Maybe it'll tell us. Maybe they'll tell us. Okay, next step. We chose our race and class. 
I'll write down the special abilities of your racing class. Just subscribe below. If you've chosen to play a magic user, ask your game master what spell or spells your character knows. Your game master decides this, which is something I kind of like in a way. Um, of course, a magic user should be able to direct their own knowledge, direct their own training. But in another way, it's kind of nice that uh, the, the DM is getting a handle on this, too. Um, note your character sheet, uh, zero experience points, so we wrote a spot for it. Uh, roll the hit dice appropriate to your class, adding your constitution bonus or penalty. All right, so we have our D8 here. One hit point. This guy has one whole hit point. Guy like said he's a bit of a glass jaw. Um, I think uh, I would probably give him four hit points just because. But you know, by the by the book here. Let's see if it says anything about that. Roll the hit die appropriate to your class, adding your Constitution bonus. We have none. And note the result as your hit points. Note that should your character have a constitution penalty, the penalty will not lower any hit die roll below one. So you can't be stillborn. So, which I've actually played in systems where um, you're, you rolled your hit dice, added your constitution to it, and ended up, oh, that character's all done because he died out of the starting gate. But uh, yeah, we have one whole hit point, and apparently they expect that. Just by reading them, I mean, I would assume they expect that, so I would not make any changes to that. I would just stick with that one hit point and say, yeah, this guy has one hit point. So roll your starting money. You get 3d6 times 10. Uh, but ask the Game Master before rolling, so we'll go ahead and find some d6s here real quick. Okay. I already have the d6s found out, so we just need to roll 3d6. Times 10. And that gives us a 12. That's a 6, not a 9. Don't have a, don't have any 9s on a 6-sided dice. So that gives us a 12. 12 times 10 is 120. So we're going to start with... It has us going down here somewhere and going money. Gold pieces. We'll have 120. Um, now purchase your equipment, which we can go do. After that, we'll figure out our armor class because of our equipment. So let's go ahead and turn to the equipment purchasing section, which I remember right is right after this section, and it is. So we'll just run through this here real super fast. Um, something I get for, so EQ, we have, I'm going to have a backpack. Uh, we'll probably have a pouch. Gotta carry that coin somewhere. Probably have some candles. Looks like we get 12. Chalk is always good. Put in that pouch. Mark your way through the dungeon. Might want a cloak. Alright, and you kind of go through there. You get the idea. If you've played these kind of games before, you kind of know what you want. Uh, flipping over here. Uh, we have armor. So right now we have no armor. Plate mail is going to be 300. Can't afford plate. We'll have to grab chain. So I usually come over and write my own section for armor. And I'm going to have chain. Chain will set me at 15 AC. Of course, I'll grab a shield. Which is going to be uh, plus one to AC. All right, plus one to AC. So that'll give me co commonly for armor class. I'll have a 16. Um, I also like to wear armor class. No shield is 15. And of course, the base armor class is 11. Um, sometimes, if you have like a m magic armor, magic shield, stuff like that, things start to get kind of confusing, at least in a lot of systems. So I usually write it down that my armor class, and then I usually write down my armor class without the shield or 
Now, if any other various modifiers I might have going on, if you have like a cloak of protection or something like that, I would actually spell it out in each thing. Like, you know, normally my armor class would be this with all my stuff, but if I don't have like some of my stuff for whatever reason, then I would be able to quickly look and reference that. Um, and then of course you'd grab a sword. Um, I suppose you'd grab a a, a, a short or a, a long sword. Um, which looks like was a uh, damage of 1d8 on that long sword. So you'd write down that he has a sword. Um, damage is 1d8, I'm guessing, plus his strength. I would suppose. I mean, that's kind of how these systems work. But let's flip back and make sure. Uh, since you know your sort of armor class you're wearing, you should note that down, and we did. Of course, dexterity bonus, we don't get to add one. Interestingly enough, I think uh, they didn't, I didn't see any limitations for, say, like the plate mail. So you could actually get to add your dexterity bonus to the plate mail. Uh, look at the attack bonus and note it on your character sheet uh, from the table in the encounter section. They could have really just put page numbers here. That would have been handy. Um, especially for, like, what, what the PDF that they submitted for the printed version of this. Because I'm not sure where the encounter section is at or where this table is at exactly. So now I kind of have to flip through. And then which table is it? What do we want? There's the reaction roll table. I'm guessing it's not that. So here's the attack bonus table right here. It's on page 46. It wasn't hard to find. It just would have been nice to have had that little bit included there. All right. Fighter level is uh, one. Um, attack bonus, it looks like, is a plus one. For a fighter, uh, cleric and thief uses the same attack bonus. Magic user has its own, and the monsters. Uh, I wonder if the monsters mirror the fighter or not exactly. No, because like in eight or in uh, first edition and so forth, the monster level and the fighter level mirror each other. So. Interestingly enough, the monster hit dice and the fighters do not mirror each other. So that's an interesting difference. Um, but yeah, we would just have an attack bonus of plus one. It's like everybody that starts out at first level gets a plus one and then they change over time. Uh, fighters get them more quickly. And then clerics and thieves and finally magic users, uh, their attack bonuses change the least quickly, which... They're going to be relying more on their magics are getting more and more powerful, so that does make sense there. Oh, let's see here. Um, look up our saving throws. Oh, yeah, I'd write down the attack bonus somewhere. Actually, I probably would have wrote it down there by the sword of damage, but anyway. Um, saving throws from the tables near the end of the encounter section. Like I said, page numbers would have been helpful here. I know it's a PDF to start with, but it just would have been helpful. All right, here's our fighter. Here's our fighters. I'm not going to copy these across, but Death Ray is 12, Magic Wands, uh, Paralysis or Petrify, Dragon Breath, and Spell. So basically the same types of, uh, they may have reworded these a little bit, but they're pretty much the same concepts, I think, as, as the saves in like 1E. And some more from finally, if you haven't already done so, name your character and boom, the character sheet's done. That was pretty quick. I mean, I'll edit it down the video a little bit here just to make it a little bit faster. But I think in real time, it took me about 10 minutes to, uh, to figure this out. 10, 15 minutes, maybe. So, and that's because I didn't know where anything was. Otherwise, pretty quick. I think, uh, Picking out your equipment was probably, would probably take the longest, although they joke naming your character does. Um, I don't generally take that long naming a character because I don't expect them to be around for long, usually. But uh, maybe in, with this one hit point, our one hit point, uh, no uh, constitution bonus and kind of dismal strength, really, for a fighter. I just don't anticipate him being around for too long. Imagine he were to go up against even one of these basic creatures here. That they could uh, probably one-shot him, because I'm sure 
even if this giant ant, giant ant, one bite, it's 2d6 damage. I granted that's a giant ant, and I'm sure there's, let's, let's look up goblin real quick. Let's just look up goblin and see what it does. Because that's kind of your, in most systems, that's kind of your basic creature, if it's in there. Um, and I have not looked this up, so I'm not even sure there's a goblin in here, but it's going to be after. Here we are. Yep, goblin. Every system has one. All right. Damage is 1d6. So all they have to do is hit, and they're going to hit. It's not a negative or anything. It's just 1d6. This guy's going to go down no matter what monster he faces. Interestingly enough, I do have gnomes here in the uh, in the monster section. So, I, yeah, if I wanted to play a gnome, I could probably start right here and figure it out and play a gnome. So, so yeah, it's a very, I mean, it's pretty flexible in that way. Um, overall, when I play it, um, maybe if I was looking to introduce uh, to a bunch of kids, um, I would definitely maybe pull this out. I know when I first started playing with my own kids and they were like five or six, we started with uh, second edition because that's what I knew. And... Uh, it worked out fine. I can that kind of uh, streamlined a few things. So this would definitely make that a lot simpler for me in that case. So yeah, if I, if I were playing with kids, absolutely, I'd look at playing with this. If I just wanted to do a quick pickup game with some people, yeah, maybe. I mean, there's they have adventures and everything all ready to go too on their website. So overall, I would say yeah, it's definitely playable. It's definitely usable. Um, would I change from Advanced Dungeons & Dragons over to this? Probably not. As long as I can find players for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st or 2nd Edition, I'll probably stick with it, but Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st or 2nd Edition. But if I didn't have any players, and I've had players for basic fantasy role-playing game, absolutely I would switch to it, because, you know, you kind of go where the players are, right? I mean, DMing a game or playing a game is... Uh, you need uh, other players. You could do solo stuff, but that gets boring after a while. So this video is kind of getting going a little bit long here. But um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.